All right, so we'll try this video again. Uh, first of all, I've been sick, so my voice sounds ridiculous right now. Oh, please. Good. Um, <coughs> I think I figured out what happened with the other video. I was actually recording it on Slimo, so the whole video Slimo stuff, but it didn't work. Um, so this week's focus has been on building duration into behavior. So we started introducing commands for the things I'm looking for. So before it was just kind of marking the things that I liked and not really focusing on an actual command, an actual command. Whereas now I'm starting to ask for that command and then rewarding her for doing the thing that I like. So we're kind of switching the order. Before it was <clears throat> either free shaping, letting her show me a behavior, or I was luring her into a behavior and then marking that, saying, hey, I like that you did that. Now it's more, okay, <laughs> now it's more of giving the command place good and then rewarding her for doing that so um, the yes marker that is something that I mostly use for shaping um, or just building engagement things like that in situations where going somewhere new where there's lots of distractions around just distractions around whatever <clears throat> good and okay those are going to be the ones that are for duration so if I say yes that means that she can be done with the behavior she comes and gets a reinforcer for me Yes is always followed by some form of a reward for her, whether that's food, which is <clears throat> typically the most rewarding thing for her. Attention, if that's a, the, all that you have, a toy, whatever. Whatever is rewarding for her in that situation. <clears throat> right now, good. Um, right now, good and okay are going to be followed with a reinforcer just to make sure she understands the association. As we progress, we can start leaning off the need to constantly reinforce. So. <coughs> Excuse me. Good for right now means I like what you're doing. Continue to do that. So I'm going to be bringing the reinforcer to her. So place. Good. I'm implying I want you to keep doing that. So I can start adding in distractions. Good. To build up that duration. If she breaks the behavior before I release her, then I will tell her no. I will put her back into behavior. Um, and then I will withhold reinforcer. So that's where I'm going to utilize the, the rewards. As, as motivation to try harder. So she's used to getting a reinforcement for every little thing that she does, as long as she's doing what I like. For right now, that's gonna to continue to happen. Um, where I'm going to stop reinforcing her is when she breaks behavior too soon or she doesn't do it all together. Good girl, go ahead. Okay, so okay is her release word. Yeah, good girl. Um, eventually that'll be more neutral, meaning okay, you're done doing that, you don't have to do it anymore. Please. Good. <clears throat> Good. And I'm using the marker so that she's responding to that and not my movement. So it's going to be good. Then I go and I give her that treat. Not good. As an example, I don't want her responding to me reaching into my treat, pou treat pouch. That should all be neutral things. So I can do this. I can put food on the ground. No. Nope. Oh. Ah. Good. <clears throat> so right there, okay. I'm gonna give her a chance to do it again. Place, good, good. So now she's like, oh, that didn't give me what I wanted the last time. So I wanna give her a chance to try it out again, good. <clears throat> I want those mistakes to happen so that they can be learning opportunities, good. Okay, I knew it's gone, see? Good. And I'm very minimalistic with how I talk to her. I'm not saying a bunch of things right now. I'm talking a lot because I'm talking to the camera, but <clears throat> typically when we're working together, it's just markers and commands. Good. <clears throat> I don't know if I finished my thought. Good. Um, before about making my body neutral. I want everything to be neutral and her only responding to those markers. Good. Okay. I'm also starting to add in a little bit of pressure right now in the learning phase, so sit, go ahead. <clears throat> I'm just applying a gentle guiding pressure into kind of manipulating her into behavior. As soon as she does the thing that I want, that pressure immediately goes away and we switch back over to reward. I want her to know, <clears throat> I want to create that association for of how to turn it off to compliant so that way later down the road when we start really <clears throat> upping the bar and I need that pressure to ask her to do something, she knows what it means and how to turn it off so it's not so aversive for her. Um, a big tip that I liked to incorporate, especially with puppies, um, <clears throat> creating 
clarity with expectations um, by establishing different windows of opportunity. So what I mean by that is, uh, for instance, I'll use my home as an example. <clears throat> In my house, I don't allow any craziness, craziness inside. I really am not doing a lot of obedience inside. The only thing that I'm doing inside is <coughs> um, advocating my space. So working on an out. Come here. Out, yes. Making her move away from me. Um, or that place command. So essentially the place commands would be teaching her how to be calm and how to do nothing while things happen around her. So those are the only really big obedience things that I do inside. It's much more, I'm gonna use the word punishment, but scientific punishment saying that you can't do things or ending behaviors, interrupting arousal inside. Because we wanna create a calm mindset. And then <clears throat> outside is where we do a lot of motivation, playing and being silly and getting her engaged and wanting to do things with us. I find that that really paints a black and white picture of, hey, we're calm all the time inside and then outside is when we can do fun things. Um, that way there's no leakage of being crazy outside and she wants to be crazy and hyper when guests are coming over or you have things going on where it's hard to multitask and deal with her being the over social dog that she is. So, <clears throat> hi. Outside, again, is where I like to do all of the fun things, all of the motivation, <coughs> playing with, yes, and letting her chase your hand around, and things like that. And then inside, it's, hey, it's only calm. Anytime she starts to peek in excitement and she starts to get a little work, worked up, we just quietly, calmly, neutrally put her away so we can interrupt arousal. Um, <clears throat> I find that that helps dogs really understand off switch versus an on switch. So. Uh, just a little bit of advice. Again, I'm really sorry about my voice. I sound like a weird person right now. This is not what I normally sound like. Um, I think we've talked on the phone, so you know this. Um, if you have any questions, hopefully this video works. Um, we're kind of going back and forth between working in the training room and going out on little field trips around the neighborhood. Um, I want to make do like easy lessons and a little bit harder session, sessions. Go back to easy sessions, a little bit harder. I don't want it to be all progress because then she gets a little frustrated. I want her to really have those moments where everything's really easy and she feels really good about herself just to keep it fun for her. She's a nice little cute puppy. Um, she likes doing things with me. <clears throat> um, she likes training, so I want to keep that mindset. Again, if you have any questions, just let me know. Uh